Good evening. It's been a while since we last talked about ancient spirits that according to Guam's culture and traditions, roam the Mariana Islands. Many people I've spoken with say these ancient spirits have the power to make a person sick, sometimes deathly ill. Others I've spoken with have said these ancient spirits have the power to possess a person. The question is, do you believe? Welcome to the Tautamona Tales 2. In the village of Marizzo is where I found Angelina Barcinas. We stay here like uh, 30 some years in this place. And it was 30 years ago when she started believing. The first thing is happened to my daughter. We're building our house. And that time I don't know anything about Dr. Mona. Then every day, every day we came up and I'm helping my husband and my little girl. So I tell I'm cleaning around the house. And I tell my husband, I said, what's our girl with no hammer anything? Can you just look down because I'm in the other side of the house doing something? Okay. When I came back, this is why my daughter's not there. Dad, where's her daughter? She says she's down there playing. But according to Angelina, she couldn't find her. She was nowhere to be found. Oh my God, I tell my husband, look at it. I tell my husband, she doesn't want to say it. Uh, I tell my husband, I say, get down. Get down and we will watch, I mean, search about the girl because she's already getting dark. We're searching everybody. We go to the neighbor because we got only two neighbors. The old lady over there and my cousin on the other side. They're not there. I cry. I say, baby, please come up. They now grab mama. I've been calling you. And just only like this, and she's very curly here. I'm calling you, but you don't pay attention to me. I said, but where? She, she's over there inside the, in the crap hole. They, 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 the Tautomona lady took my girl down to the prapo and make her play with their kids. Angelina recalls this story so vividly as if it happened only yesterday. When she talked, I said, she told me, she said, Mama, I've been calling you to come and see me with the little kids. The lady, you just said, where? Inside that hole. So you take my hand and we go over where that but bushes of flowers and just like this so and the lady's house down there is very nice and she make me eat I said what kind of food I said I don't know oh oh I don't know because you know her baby when she talk I said I don't know I said but and she lady gave me kids and that's how I that I believe and my grocery coming from there is a nice shelves they're clean and white they give my girl. She says ever since then, she's been a believer in the ancient spirits who oftentimes visit her. Well, sometimes at night, not every night, they came to my room and play with my little. They're playing in my little and said, leave me alone. Go and sleep because I'm going to sleep. She stopped. Or they go to my feet and rub my feet. But that was a good, not a bad. When is it bad? Hmm? When is it bad? It's bad when it's like you you hate them. The, the more you hate them, the more it makes you sick and either she's going to kill you or he gives you a bad bend. Angelina says the Tautamonas like her. They are her friends and even give her super strength. If somebody make me mad, I can smash everything. I can throw everything out. Nobody can help me. I can make this whole, this thing go over to that big field. Nobody can, can stop me. A witness to her superpowers is her son, James. When she, she come about, if he being possessed by that, there's nothing that will control her. It's even the old man, not even to hold her down. No matter how heavy the stuff is, he'll pick it up. James, he, like his mother, claims he too can sense the Tatamonas. You see, you see Tatamonas. I see the. Are they around us right now? Yeah. 
any kids or are they? There's a lala. There's an adult around us right now. Is it male or female? It's a male. Yeah. That's that's her. Who's yours? <coughs> uh, huh? Is yours female or is yours male? Mine is. Uh, I have a, a cat and no kids. How many kids? A four. What is um? Where is the Tata Mona standing right now? Uh, my old lady Dexter. <laughs> you can see it. Huh? You can feel it. You can feel him. Is it a good That's feeling right. or is it a bad feeling? No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. As long as you okay. don't uh, abuse them, okay. you're okay. It's apparent James and his mother are real close. When she turns up missing, he's the only one the family can rely on. The, all the mayor's people come and lucky there's no policeman, there's no policeman. Well, even the policeman, no helicopter looking for me because they call my, bro my son to, from his work to come and, and she's the one she can find me. Nobody can find me except him. My sister came down, people from the mayor came down, they went hunting the jungle in there, and she was just sitting right on top of the Tarantanga tree, a log like this. For a lady like this to sit down, that will bend, right? Or break. But nobody couldn't even see her. So they had to call me to work, from work. So here we go again. While Angelina and James claim to have visions, and I guess you could say special powers, they do believe there are others on Guam who are even more powerful. For example, James says his mother has the power to heal. According to what I know is she can make medicine for herself to cure herself, but if she makes medicine for somebody else to cure somebody else, they'll kill her. That's my understanding. So she cannot make no medicine only for herself. See, a lot of these uh, are people here that get sick by uh, uh, Totomona. See, some of the Syrianos are not that strong. See, some of them are only taught by a Suriano before them. The only Suriano that I really know that's really strong and he knows, if they make you uh, like, you know, teach woman or what gets sick, this Suriano will know if you're coming. Because he can sense it. Because his, his uh, Totomono will tell him. And this is uh, Tuchampiano. We'll tell you about this powerful witch doctor in a bit. But do Angelina and James really have Tautamona friends or unexplainable powers? Or could it be something brought on by an overactive imagination? Have you ever ran into people that go, you know, they're just crazy? They're just crazy people that, you know. Yeah, a lot, I've you know got I mean? a lot of people they don't believe. Yes, uh, I've seen a lot of them. Uh, like uh, especially a lot of this uh, young generation who go something mm -hmm. and they find this, uh, you know, those old pottery or, you know, yeah. those, uh, and they tend to remove it. Mm -hmm. See, uh, those people don't believe in that, but when you take those and bring it to your house, remember that you're inviting them to your house and it may be not be you, it may be one of your kids. That's how it is. And they will make you kiss sleep. They'll be seeing things from flame to, or you'll be seeing your kids playing in the window because they'll be playing with them. Next on the Tautamona Tales, we'll introduce you to a woman who believes she was possessed by a Tautamona. In the hospital for several days, no one knew what was wrong with her. The horrifying experience coming up. For those of you who've probably seen the movie The Exorcist or perhaps The Possession of Emily Rose, then you'll have an idea of the next story you're about to hear. I sat down with a woman who believes she was possessed by an ancient spirit. Welcome back to the Tatamona Tales. It was after Emily Sablon returned to Guam after graduating high school in San Diego, California, that her life would change drastically. I was Coming out of school from night classes, there was a place called Rocco's Pizza, right there at the corner where you turn off to the college in Mingilao. And the old friends would usually hang out there. 
um, those friends are still here in Guam and they remember they all took a part of what happened to me. Emily was a student at the University of Guam. At the age of 19, she was like most teenagers, ambitious, daring, rebellious, and testing fate. I was my mother's child, the child that sometimes had no fear. Um, even all the things they tell me not to, you know, uh, go where not to go. After years of hearing about old Tautaumona tales, she wasn't necessarily a true believer. That is until a night of having fun with her friends turned into three days of hell. There were all, a whole bunch of them outside hanging out, and then I decided I uh, really needed uh, nature called, so I went to the back. The back of uh, Rocco's Pizza is right by the woods right there, and it's not as built up as, this, as it is now there in Manila. So I was going to enter the women's bathroom, and there was this cat, and each time I moved to the right, it moved to the right. I was trying to get over him so I can get in. But each time I moved either direction, he would go the same way. Emily's temper then got the best of her. Running out of patience, she eventually gave the cat what she says was a good kick. This cat rolled three times and tumbled into the grass, but he did the strangest thing. And that was he stood in the grass and looked at me with piercing yellow eyes. And after I got out of there, the cat was gone. Emily says as she made her way back to her friends in front of the pizza parlor, she felt a little strange, different, unusual. I went up to the front where everybody was, and my brother said, said something to me, and I just like turned, at him, turned on him. He said I took a bottle, a, a Coke bottle or something, and I broke it. And I was like going, charging at him. So everybody goes, whoa, what's wrong with her, you know, and everything. But then I passed out. Her friends took her home in Totu. In and out of consciousness, finally her parents knew it was time to seek medical attention. With a family friend driving the car and her parents in the back seat tending to her, Emily says it began. She's passed on now, but she drove their car and took my parents and they were with me. My mom, she said I was sitting in the back seat and was cradled in my mom's arms and I would be crying, but then I was talking, talking to someone. And although that trip from Toto to Naval Hospital, um, my mom said I was talking and then I was talking to my sister. Emily says all she could see was the image of her sister. The problem, the sister she's referring to, was living in San Diego at the time. Sounds a little odd, but wait till you hear what happened when she finally arrived to the hospital. After that, they did, they interviewed my brother and sister, what she on, did she take anything? They took blood tests, they took all kinds of stuff, and nothing. I wasn't on drugs or anything, it was just something overcame me. Could her unexplainable illness be related to the incident involving the cat in the jungle? At first, she didn't believe. Each time that I would wake up, I would tell my mom when I would be conscious, and my mom would talk to me, I can't see her, I couldn't see. Actually, I was blinded for three days. And after the, three, the, th the third day, my mother, the test and everything, they just took me home. And I was like, um, my, my sister goes, I had super strength. I even broke the straps on the gurney up where they had me tied down because I, I, every, each time I wake up, I be screaming. Um, and I keep telling my mom I can't see. What modern medicine couldn't cure and uncertain what was wrong with Emily, it was time to seek advice elsewhere. Her parents took her to, from what many people have told me, one of the most powerful Suruhanas on Guam, Francisco Tenorio, or more commonly referred as Tunsupiano. My father said that as soon as we got out of the car, the old man says, I know why you're here. I've been waiting for you. She did something to one of my people. 
and my mom, my brothers and sisters had no knowledge of what I'd done because I was by myself. Tunsa Piano didn't need an explanation. He knew. He could feel it. So he told my dad, go home, they gave him the sleeve, and it was supposed to have like oil or something on it. And says, put this over her eyes, but when you take her in her room, take a pail of rocks and some of the palma, the the coconut leaf that they blessed during Palm Sunday. And says, take this and burn a shirt of yours that has your sweat. And so they did that. Could it be as easy as that? Would she regain her eyesight after burning some leaves and an old shirt and taking some advice from a local witch doctor? While doing as he was told, Emily says her father began burning the leaves. But as for her, that's a different story. My sister says that when my mom came in to talk to me, I jumped up and I started screaming. I screamed at the top of my lungs, get away from me, get away from me. So my mom took this cross off the wall and was coming at me with the cross and I was like fighting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's almost, my, my sister, of course, in the 70s, the exorcist came up. My sister goes, your eyes were something like that. Unsure of what to do, it's what her mother did next that she believes freed her from whatever or whoever took over her. They said that by the time my dad was burning his shirt back there and my mom coming at me, because of course we're Catholics and there's always, we're always told and taught nothing stronger than your faith, you know, and whatever may possess you, any demons, anything, there's nothing stronger. And so she had come near me and placed that crucifix next to me and then I, I passed out. She put that there and she, my mom and my dad and my youngest sister heard a shriek, a woman just shrieked with the smoke going in the, in the back. And remember the old house, the louvers mm -hmm. with the screen. Some of that smoke was coming in right behind our be bedroom door. Mm -hmm. I mean bedroom window. Mm -hmm. And so that was coming in. And at the same time, my mom was putting the crucifix and when, she, when when I passed out and that shriek came, I woke up and I told her I was hungry and I could see. Emily believes she was possessed. And if it weren't for her faith and help from Tunsupiano, she's not sure what would have happened. So all that time the woman I was seeing was not my sister. It was really a Tautamona, a demon, I guess, uh, bad spirits who was pretending to be my sister so that I'd come to her. Emily says her family even went so far as going back to Tunsupiano to tell him that she was fine. The local witch doctor said Emily was special. I think he told my father that if I wanted Tautomona friends, I could have it. After the entire ordeal, Emily says her parents took her back to church and had her rebaptized. And despite her faith in God, she is a believer. Do I believe that they exist? Yes, I do. That they're out there because I don't know what force caused me to experience that. Um, I know I wasn't on any drugs that may cause hallucinations and stuff. Uh, so it's a phenomenon I can't explain, but I know that it did happen. And the vision, the vision of my sister, her voice and all that, I, I experienced that at um, right here in Guam at my home in Toto. Are you a believer yet? Do Tautamonas really exist? Coming up next, the voice of the ancient spirits caught on tape. Stay tuned. In putting together this program, one person seemed to be a common thread through all the stories I've heard about the Tautamona. It was about a man, a powerful Suruhanu, who had a special friend and special powers, the gift of healing and a peculiar sixth sense. His name was Tun Supiano. Little did I know that the family I was about to meet had a very close connection.
My dad is the one that taught me how to be, to uh, heal, you know, the, get all the medicine, all kinds of medicine. That's how I started. My father would say, of all his children, that I have the most gifted, that even if, if you have headache or anything, pain, and I touch you, I touch you, in less than two minutes, you, you know. Margarito Tenorio is the son of Tun Supiano. He, along with his sister Priscilla Rodriguez, have a lifetime of chilling stories that would have the hair on the back of your neck stand. Like their father, they can feel and sense the spirits. When was the last encounter you both had with, with the Tatum? We're still encountering. Like right now, every night when my wife and I go to the bedroom to sleep, right? Somebody's walking in the, on the door side. They're still guarding us. What do you mean guarding us? They, they, they are around here protecting Trump Texas. How can you tell them they're protecting or not? Like I could feel it. Do you feel them around us now? Yeah. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> Especially at this hour. This is the hour. Yeah. Do they? Is this like what they? This, this is the pathway. The path. The path. Yeah. Where, to where? The, the way to Miami. Oh, so this pathway is going to the bay, to the, to the ocean. They always go fishing. But you can definitely feel they're around us. Right? Yeah. But we got used to it already. And they should be. Not only was their father a powerful Suruhanu, so was their grandfather. Way back in, uh, when I was young, growing up, my grandfather got the uh, goddess of Tomona. She got the power of uh, this, uh, he got a friend of Tomona. So one, one midnight, and you know, I was uh, just young about, maybe it was only eight years old. I remember that then. And when I get up for, you know, to use the bathroom, and then when I get up, I heard somebody knocking on the door. And then, uh, you know, the way they, they sounded, you could not understand them. The way, the way they speak the, the, the language, they say, Hi. Hi. when they're knocking on the door. So for my grandfather to get up and see them. So I didn't pay attention, and then I, some, you know, that, the spirit just came into my, my grandfather's bedroom and they started talking. We cannot even understand what they're saying. And while Margarito and Priscilla says they're not scared of the spirits, growing up with Tata Mona's constantly around hasn't exactly been easy. I was six, uh, 15 years old when we were here. We already moved from Manila to here. You know, I was young, I was happy-go-lucky. So there's a, there's a iguana, I went inside the, inside the uh, cave. So there's a cave down here. So I take out the coconut house, the dry one. I burn it. I burn that uh, cave. Then the, to, for the, for the, the iguana to come out. The, the iguana came out. Half of the body is charcoal, but it kept going. That night, my hand, <laughs> my hand got swollen. It's painful here, and it still shows that this thing is the only thing that's holding it. I thought it's going, I'm going to lose my middle finger. This thing was like this. Then my dad uh, asked me, what did you do down there? And I told him that I burned the lige, uh, iguana down at the, the, for the cave. Then uh, that's the Totomona spit, what you just did. So my dad went down and asked, uh, asked forgiveness for me. So my hand is really, uh, really like, a, like it's coming, it's breaking down because there's nothing holding my, uh, you could see the bone in, in my finger uh, inside. Then uh, that, that applied the medicine, then it become, become well. For Priscilla, her story's a bit more complicated. She claims when she was in the 11th grade attending the Academy of Our Lady of Guam, everything was fine. She left for school in the morning, but by the end of the day, her legs and feet were swollen to the point she couldn't fit her shoes. Priscilla says her father decided to take her to the hospital, and as expected... There's nothing wrong, so he'll, he'll take care of it. So uh, there's nothing wrong with me. So uh, I have to get, uh, get off of school for about a week and then to start putting medicine on me. And when he touched, touched my legs, just like an ice, cold ice. So I was about a week. Priscilla's contact with the Tata Monas, however, became more frightening as the spirits began to taunt her children. Her son, Freddy, was the firstborn. And at two years old, the first to experience the Tata Mona. One morning I was preparing breakfast for him and I, I, I didn't hear him outside at the back door of the house so I was calling for him and he didn't answer 
and I keep, you know, calling him, Fred, Freddy, Freddy, Freddy boy, where are you? No answer. So I told my father, said, uh, I can't find Fred, Freddy. So my father came out and, you know, started talking, said, release my grandson. He's not doing any harm to you or, or my daughter. A half hour would pass, still no sign of Fred. So about 45 minutes, um, I you know, keep calling, said, Freddy boy, where are you? And he said, Mommy, mom, Mommy, I'm up here. And my father said, my father said, where? I said, up here. So we look at the coconut tree. He was right in the middle. According to Priscilla, it took four men to get her son down from the coconut tree. Yes. As for her second son. Uh, we were outside one evening about the same time, I mean, this time of the day, you know, feeding the pig, because we have pigs back there then. So I just finished taking him a shower and only put him in his underwear. So all we, all we notice is him running, running down the hill. We have to, my, you know, my husband have to, his father have to run after him to catch him. I said, where are you going? I said, the girl with the cowboy hat is calling me. So we have to grab him. If we didn't see him, we could have had a, you know, a nightmare. Could these incidents really be true? A toddler stuck in a coconut tree because of the Tauta Mona? Or Priscilla's other son running off into the jungle because a little girl was calling him to come play? Could it be just a wild imagination? Not so, says Priscilla, because she has a tape to prove that Tauta Monas really do exist. And my third boy, and I still have the tape back in 1975. The voice of the Totomona while I was recording him. Priscilla says it happened when her mother was teaching her youngest son, Anthony, how to speak Chamorro. He was two years old at the time, learning words like Nana, Tata, in which Anthony would repeat them. So I, I played the tape, and that sound was there. So I, I, I was going to erase it. I said, no, let me let my father hear it. So when my father heard it, he said, uh, it's them. I said, who's them? I said, the Totomona. I said, how can that happen? He said, they can be anywhere. And I guess what happened in the tape was I was playing while she was talking to me, and I, and I, I guess I jumped off a chair, and I hit my, actually, the scar is still, yeah, it's right here, the scar. I hit my pinky on, on, the, on, on a dresser. And I was crying. Priscilla allowed me to hear the audio tape, which was transferred into her family's computer. She wouldn't allow us to make a recording of the conversation, but if we did, here's a dramatization of what it sounded like. It actually took a while for Anthony to listen to the audio recording. He's heard the stories growing up, but it wasn't until he was in high school he got up the courage to listen to what happened to him when he was only two years old. Every time people would come over, I, it just gave me, you know, I don't know, for some reason it just kind of, it still scared me. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't really until recently, maybe, God, maybe five, six years ago when I was like, I was comfortable listening to it. I mean, even now, I still get a little, you know, raises my hair. For the family of the powerful Tunsupiano, it's not a question of do you believe, but rather... Tautamona is, I think that's a part of, uh, I guess, our culture. You know, it's not like we, and we don't, of course, we don't, we don't venerate them or anything like that, but it's just, we, we just respect them. We learn how to respect them. And... And that, you know, through my experiences, that's, I guess that's what I've learned, uh, you know, through, through my personal experiences. You know, you respect them. I mean, when we go to the jungle, especially, we don't, you know, my, my grandfather's always really, was really big on saying, you know, make sure you, you respect the place you're at. And so, you know, we do. And With my, our knowledge on this Tautomona, I do not believe in Tautomona. I prove that there is Tautomona. Who do I believe? I believe in God. <clears throat> because I believe in God because I never see God. People say there is a God. I believe in them. Tautomona, I've seen them. I've heard them talk. That's why I don't believe in them. I've proven that there is Tautomona. You know they exist. Yeah. Now that you've heard all the stories, are you a believer? Until the next time, I'm Sabrina Salas-Matanani. Good night and be safe.